is forever when you're just a little kid. So Cyrus Jones live forever. Grave digger. We are back live. Now, remember on the morning of 9-11, the London Guardian reported that they were having a Carlisle Group meeting in D.C., and George Bush Sr. was at the table with the Bin Laden family. Remember, they flew the Bin Ladens out to safety, then said it was a conspiracy theory, and then later had to admit it because Florida television aimed cameras. When all other air traffic was grounded for two days, they were allowed to take off. And now we know Anwar al-Awlaki, one of the masterminds of 9-11, on record, they say, and the guy who ran the seven, uh, involved in the seven seven, uh, the guy involved in the Fort Hood, the guy uh, supposedly uh, uh, running the underwear bombing, he is always involved in everything. And then Fox News gets a document that a couple of months after nine eleven, he was at a high powered meeting. Anwar Al Alaki, maybe the first American on CIA's kill or capture list, but he was also a lunch guest of military brass at the Pentagon within months of September 11th, 2001 terror attacks. Fox News has learned documents exclusively obtained by Fox News, including an FBI interview con conducted after the Fort Hood shooting in November 09, state that Alaki was taken to the Pentagon as part of the military's outreach to the Muslim community in the immediate aftermath of the attacks. And then they have a link to the documents, and later we'll go to this article and then link on the documents. I want to show those on screen for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. And it just goes on to how he met with the Secretary of the Army and others at this meeting. Uh, Wayne Madsen, of course, worked for the NSA. He worked uh, for the uh, Navy. Uh, he worked at uh, every level. He's written for, you name it. Uh, BBC, uh, Washington Post, uh, the, uh, I mean, the list goes on and on, and he's one of the leading experts on this. This is a short segment. We'll have him in the long segment coming up. But uh, they're going to have trouble spinning this, Wayne, and I wonder why they're releasing this now. Because if you and I know he's one of the main terror handlers, uh, then the government knows this. Uh, why is this coming out now? Well, I'm always uh, uh, intrigued when Fox News releases something that... Uh is interesting. Remember, it was also Fox News that broadcast the series on the uh, role of the uh, Israeli art students and the and the, and the movers uh, on 9/11 in New York and, uh, and New Jersey. And uh, now they've come out with this other bombshell. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure whether they're trying to, you know, cover c cover the other side. Uh, but uh, I, what I make of it is uh, we saw them. Uh, when they do this, usually there's a reason Murdoch uh, would have probably had some say in uh, a story of this magnitude, uh, unless he's just interested in selling airtime on Fox News. Um, I think a lot of this stuff was out there. My, I think what's interesting about a, a Lockheed being at the Pentagon, does this have something to do with um, the Pentagon uh, pulping um, Tony Schaefer's book? Uh, because we know that he was involved in able danger and a, and another subset of that. Oh, good point. Galley. A good point. I wonder who may have leaked this. Hmm. Yes, yes. Um, and and I, I, you know, we don't know everything about able danger, but we what we do know is that the military, uh, defense intelligence agency, had some of these so-called uh, people involved with the hijacking surrounded. And then they had a, a you know another group called Doorhawk Galley, which was monitoring the monitors apparently. And uh, I would not be surprised if it turns out that Alaki uh, was somehow involved in uh, the group that uh, Able Danger was uh, mo monitoring in the months before and possibly, I guess, after. Well, from my analysis, he is clearly a CIA master handler of organic lunatics. And this is the variety of terror where they just basically provoke a turret and open the door and encourage. And, and, and you notice these lunatics always attack at a politically opportune time uh, for the control grid. Do, uh, do you agree that that's basically his MO? Oh, yeah. And I don't think it's any different than the recent revelation about David Headley, uh, who was the guy uh, uh, accused of uh, being involved in the uh, Mumbai attacks, uh, where they said, his wife said, hey, look, uh, uh, it, you know, is he working for you guys? And, you know, uh, we know that he was an informant for the DEA. I've written that he also worked for the CIA, and he, he had been uh, casing places all over India and Pakistan uh, for terrorist attacks. Uh, and I think this is just another example.
All right, stay there. Let's break down Anwar Al Alaki on the other side and a SWAT and some of these other characters because, I mean, there is no doubt, ladies and gentlemen, that Saudi Arabia works for British, Israeli, and U.S. intelligence, and they are providing at least the decoy patsies for the staged terror attacks. Then the staged terror attacks are used to take the liberties of Westerners. It's not just words when we get up here and say 9-11 was an inside job, okay? I wish it wasn't an inside job. But the entire official story has been proven to be a lie. Six of the ten commissioners have come out and said there's a criminal cover-up and a fraud. We've got Panetta, the head of the transportation uh, agency, in the bunker with Cheney, watching him order the stand-down at the Pentagon. Uh, we've got it all. We've got it all. I mean, it, it just, it, how the buildings fell, the, the police saying get back, they're going to blow seven up, the firefighter tapes, it, 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 the whole thing's a lie. And Wade Madsen, and Wade Madsen Report is our guest. I, I want to get into all of this uh, uh, with you, Wayne, and the t bring up WikiLeaks and a few other issues with you uh, and uh, some of the new developments uh, on on that front. But why would the CIA come out three months ago in uh, Spy Talk? Uh, that weekly column uh, in the Washington Post, admittedly written by a former uh, operative, and admit that they put out fake bin Laden videos. Why do they go on Fox and say, yes, the, the, the Army and the Marines are helping grow the opium? Why are they, uh, is, again, why is Fox coming out and going, yeah, the 9-11 the mastermind was meeting at the Pentagon two months later, and then he runs everything else? Uh, why do they come out and admit that they ordered the cell phone videos? Not just one, but now it's, they're reporting multiple videos of the Fort Hood shooting. Uh, why can't Congress get the emails where uh, Major Hassan was communicating with Alaki uh, for two years before? I mean, it's just, it's out. I guess they, let me try to answer my own question and then have you answer it from your perspective. They know this is all out in the open, and so for those of us that are awake, and for good people inside government who are awake, and people in industry who are awake, they the system's saying, yeah, we're terrorists, as just a way to brazenly terrorize everybody psychologically, and to further inoculate uh, the, the, the brain-dead public, so as this stuff comes out, it's really not news anymore, because they've already admitted it and hid it uh, in plain view. What's your view, Wayne Madsen? Well, that's what I that's what I believe. I believe that the people who watch Fox News um, basically uh, won't even understand the impact of, of this revelation because they don't know the other part. They obviously don't know about Able Danger. They don't know about the the Bin Laden meeting with uh, Bush and Carlucci and the other Carlisle Group people at the Ritz Carlton Hotel on the morning of nine eleven before the first plane even hit the uh, the, the the tower in New York. Uh, so I think. Uh, this is some sort of a conditioning process. Uh, but, you know, this, fo this follows just a day after, uh, two days maybe, after Fox and CNN both reported that <laughs> Bin Laden was hiding in a house somewhere in northern Pakistan. <laughs> I noticed they pulled that. They, 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 you can't even hardly find it now on the web. But, I mean, what a ludicrous, I mean, the Pakistanis said it's ludicrous that, you know, here we have Bin Laden still alive. The only... The only footage we have of bin Laden uh, that's legitimate is the one with him coming out of the cave in Afghanistan, and that's circa 1999, I suppose. Uh, uh, it's, it's a dated stock, uh, stock footage, uh, but we haven't really seen anything. We've seen a fake bin Laden after 9-11, you know, the guy that doesn't look like him and put on several pounds that we're told was bin Laden. Well, remember uh, three years ago. Uh, it came out in British news that when they released, you know, surfaced video of three of the hijackers at an Al Qaeda training base, and then there was a footnote a week later. Oh, that was computer animated with video of them uh, put into old videos of Bin Laden for a made-for-TV movie in England. I mean, they think we're so dumb. Right, and I, I, I also recall the one where Bin Laden was giving a giving a speech, and the only moved on and were his lips. It looked like one of the old clutch cargo cartoons where the only lips were moving. Well, they put uh, another one out that is that standard program anybody can buy that they use in a lot of video games. Uh, it's it, it's basically the same template they use in the movie Final Fantasy where everybody basically looks the same. They just change a few features. It, one of the videos was clearly a video game, uh, you know, 1997 quality graphic. Oh, I, and I think this is all part of the PSYOPs uh, 
operation. We, you know, we want, once again, we find out that the, uh, the, the Army PSYOPs has placed uh, their people in, in, in newspapers in Savannah, Georgia, and in Ra- Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, I mean, it's the Pentagon that basically is dictating uh, this kind of news content today. And, and uh, you know, well, Fox comes out with something that clearly is embarrassing the Pentagon. So, uh, you know, I'll give credit where credit is due and say good on Fox for this and good on them for exposing the, uh, the role of the Israelis, um, the art students, and the, and the people in the telecom business and uh, the movers uh, uh, before and during and after. The yeah, urban moving systems. But you notice they did three reports on that and never touched it again. In my gut, I think this is some type of high-level blackmail brinksmanship going on, I guess, with Fox licenses or something. I'm, I'm not sure, but I mean, I think this is really high-level brinksmanship. It, it very well could be. Um, but, uh, you know, this whole thing, is, again, it doesn't come as any great shock to me because, remember, remember, if Alaki is in the Pentagon in those months, who, who is running the Pentagon? It's Donald Rumsfeld and the neocon, the neocon unit that they placed in there, Douglas Spice and, and uh, the rest of these The guys. Office of so, Special Plans, an admitted Israeli operation. Absolutely. So, um, so that, that, you know, how, how did this... They can't say it was an oversight because... No, I, I remember covering um, uh, the, the Iraq, uh, the invasion of Iraq at the Pentagon. It was not an easy place to get into, and now they're trying to tell us this guy affiliated with Al Qaeda got in and, and had, had you know dined dined with the general. Well, he dined with the Secretary of the Army. <laughs> well, well, maybe he maybe he also got a, um, a congratulatory uh, uh, handshake and a, and a nice uh, bonus for for his previous work. Because at the time, they're saying he was involved at the highest levels of the 9-11 attack. And then he struts in, hey, secretary, I'm ready to have dinner. And they're like, ha, 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 five, baby. Woo, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 and, and now we know he was also linked to the, the underwear bomber and the, uh, uh, the fizzle, the Times Square fizzle bomber. I mean, I, you know, and remember the reaction of these two guys uh, on the airplanes when they arrested them they you know they were very lackadaisical about the whole well, thing. well the witnesses described when they got the underwear bomber on the plane in amsterdam that he was disheveled looked drugged and had no papers just like literally a homeless mental patient and then they and whoever this sharp dressed guy was like look you're putting him on the plane and whoever it was had such authority and then it comes out state department was ordered by an unnamed u.s intelligence agency to get him on the plane well there we go so it's it, it, as you have said this is all hiding in plain sight um, obviously, now we know why the 9-11 Commission, people like Zelikow and the other clowns they had working on that commission, uh, were, did not give full access to everything to the uh, people who were demanding it, including the two, the, the two chairmen of the, of the commission and the other members. Uh, this, these were the tidbits, obviously, that they didn't want to have come out then because it would have uh, ruined the whole precept about 9-11 that they had sold, um, you know, not only the American people, but still tried to sell the world. Wayne, let me ask you this, and, and then we'll get to a few other questions to let you go because I know you're busy. Um, just in two minutes from, I mean, we know the official story is a lie. We know that, that PNAC called for big terror attacks to be blamed on foreign enemies, uh, just a retread of Northwoods. But when you look at this, my best analysis is, and we know the hijackers were trained at U.S. bases. We know they ordered the embassies in Saudi Arabia. This is on record to let them into the country, even though they were on terror list. They were told, don't worry, their terror designation is a cover. Uh, we know all that. That's even in Time and Newsweek, hidden in plain view, that, oh, yeah, they, they were trained at U.S. bases. We know they were drilling and that James Woods saw this on one of the planes, warned the FBI, was basically told to shut up a few weeks before. We know all of that's going on, and best I can tell, Whatever went on with those aircraft, these guys thought they were taking part in airport security drills, which we know they do, always trying to sneak bombs in and the rest of it. That comes out all the time. The Navy SEALs do it. The Air Marshals do it. The FBI does it. The Pentagon does it. And that's also a nice cover in their drill to run a real attack. And that, uh, I mean, what's your best breakdown? I know you don't like to speculate about what really went on on 